Mars is uninhabitable for humans. The atmosphere is too thin, it's too cold, there's too much radiation, and there's barely any oxygen in the air. If humans want to live long term on Mars, they will have to change these conditions so that they can live out in the open instead of in enclosed colonies. The reason why Mars has such conditions is because it doesn't have a magnetic field. The radiation that hits Mars stems from this fact, and it is likely the culprit for the lack of atmosphere, which itself is responsible for the cold and lack of oxygen. This means that if we want to terraform Mars, the first step will be to give it a magnetic field so that it doesn't lose any atmosphere we give it. The best way to do this would be to send a 1 to 2 Tesla magnet to the Martian L1 point with the Sun. At the L1 point, this magnet will always stay between Mars and the Sun. MRI magnets have a strength between 0.5 and 1.5 Tesla, so we can approximate this magnet as an MRI magnet. It takes 15 kilowatt hours per use of an MRI machine, and a use takes an hour. That means that to keep the magnet running, it takes a constant power of 15 kilowatts, or 15,000 joules per second. The magnet would need to be powered by solar panels because it's in space. The panels that NASA use have an efficiency of about 34%, and at the orbit of Mars, there are 589 watts of energy per square meter coming from the sun. This means that one square meter of solar panels generates 200 watts. To power the magnet, you would therefore need 75 square meters of solar panel. The ISS has 3,360 square meters of these panels, and even with more panels for other operations of this magnet craft, it wouldn't need too many panels. Once you have that fairly simple and feasible craft placed at the Martian L1 point, you can start changing the atmosphere. The best way to start would be to heat up Mars. Mars is so cold right now that at its poles, the ice is made up not only of water, but solid carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice. That means that if we heat up Mars a little, carbon dioxide will be released into the atmosphere, heating it up further. To heat up the planet, a couple tactics could be used, some more destructive than others. The easiest and most obvious way to generate heat is blowing things up. Nuclear weapons could be detonated on the polar ice caps of Mars to release carbon dioxide and heat up the planet, the same concept could be used but altered by hurling asteroids at Mars's ice caps. Those two methods, while quick, aren't very safe or controlled, and if people are already living on Mars, I don't think they would appreciate the bombardment. Some safer ways to heat up Mars include giant mirrors placed in orbit around Mars to reflect more sunlight onto the poles of Mars or the rest of the planet to generate some heat. Also, Black surfaces could be placed on the poles or all over the planet because darker surfaces absorb more heat than lighter ones. Maybe a concept from the book Red Mars could be used in which windmills are placed all over the planet and their energy output goes into heating up plates of metal so that they radiate heat into the air. In the book, they estimated that millions of these would need to be distributed to heat up the planet much, but it might be worth it. The best way to heat up the planet would be to use all of these methods together. Once more carbon dioxide has been released, as well as water vapor, another good greenhouse gas, the atmosphere would be thicker and hotter. The next thing to do would be to fill the atmosphere with more oxygen to make it breathable. There are a few ways to do this. One way to do this is to make factories that convert the rust on Mars's surface into oxygen and iron. The iron byproduct could be used to build things, so this method would be doubly useful. A lot of these factories would need to be produced to have any effect, but not that much iron might be wanted. An easier way to do that might be to release extremophile life forms onto the slightly terraformed surface of Mars. Cyanobacteria, or lichens, or moss could be released onto the planet to produce oxygen and start a biosphere. At this point, Mars being protected from radiation, fairly warm, with a fairly thick oxygen-rich atmosphere, would be like living 10 or 20,000 feet up a mountain on Earth. Livable, but a little uncomfortable for most people. There would be some bodies of water, so more plants and animals could be released into the biosphere. In the end, Mars might end up like a mountainous environment, chilly with thin air, but livable. There is a bit of a problem with Mars, though. It is too small. This graph plots temperature versus escape velocity of different planets, and bands with gases the planet can hold on to. 
If the planet is under a band, then that gas is too light to hold on to. If the planet is above a band, then that gas is heavy enough to be held on to. If the planet is in a band, that gas is sort of able to be held on to. As you can see, Mars can't hold on to water vapor, meaning that water would be lost over time. Also, the fact that we would heat up Mars would mean that it would also start to lose the oxygen that we need too. There is no way to get around this problem. It is impossible to change the mass of Mars enough to fix this. That means that despite our efforts, Mars would return to its old dead state after thousands or millions of years. All in all, Mars can be terraformed to be fairly habitable, but it can't last forever. Because of the loss in gas that would occur in the upper atmosphere, Mars would return to being cold and dead.